Ryan Day's been in fine form of late, and he's going to get us underway, playing for a place in the quarterfinals against Mark Selby. The winner plays either Marco Fu or Anthony McGill. Saw Day at the weekend in Gibraltar, got to the semi-finals there, beat Neil Robertson in the quarters, lost out to Judd Trump 4-2. Mark Selby's form in 2017, not as strong as it was towards the end of 2016, but he's still the runaway world number one and one of the favourites, of course, here this week. He's won the three biggest ranking events of the last year, the World Championship at the end of last season, and already this season, the International Championship and the UK Championship. Also in there, the Paul Hunter Classic, so he's won three ranking titles this season. There's never going to be any danger of him not qualifying for this tournament. But as I was saying, Day playing himself into contention for a top 16 position. There's only one more ranking event after this one. The China Open until the World Championship. So after Beijing, top 16 in the official world rankings will go to the Crucible as seeds and won't have to play the three best in 19 frame qualifying matches. And, of course, this Players' Championship is a ranking tournament, so the 16 players here have a, a start on everyone else. It's big money as well. They're already guaranteed 10,000. 15 for the quarterfinals. It goes up to 125 for the winner on Sunday. Day, though, is left chance here for Selby. Didn't play in this tournament last year. Gave it a miss. but withdrew, did Mark Selby as he did from the China Open, but uh, he was certainly fresh going to the Crucible where he won his second world title. Nice chance to just settle in here for Selby. Quite a few open reds to go out. Yes, as I say, since the new year, January time, he's uh, not pulled up too many trees. He won one match at the Masters, one match at the German Masters, a couple in the Welsh Open, a couple in Gibraltar. Lost first round of the World Grand Prix, so... Nothing stellar, but uh, he very rarely goes out first round of tournaments at World Grand Prix accepted this season. It's not just winning the big tournaments, it's being consistent and getting through early rounds of tournaments, which has helped keep him so far in front in the rankings. In the last season, or well, two seasons, so last season and all of this season so far, he's earned 900. 58,000 pounds, so he's going to crack the million for two years, guaranteed. Well, this is a good start from the world champion. Just needs to keep going. He's running out of loose reds, so at some point soon, he's got to disturb the cluster. 
I'm not sure. I don't think there's plants there. Let's have a look. So we'll have to go into them shortly. And that will be the key shot in terms of him winning the frame in one visit. Could play that shot now. He's got an angle from the black to disturb them. Well, just cannoning one red. He's uh, pushed that one on. He's also on the one to the corner. And can just nudge a couple more out here. Yeah, so suddenly the frame opening up for Selby. Looking good to take a 1 0 lead already. And there's the shot I mentioned into the cluster. He's got them all open now, so a really big break on. And Ryan Day has barely had a look in in this frame. Highest break last evening was 1 3 1. Anthony Hamilton. There's a £5,000 prize for the highest break of the week. And Selby uh, looking good here to set a really big target. There's a 1-4-5 on. 144. now he's taking the pink. He'd be disappointed, I think, not to make a total clearance here, the way they're set. Well, this is how you dream of starting matches. This is great stuff from Mark Selby. Just one chance is all it took. And he's keeping Day cold as well. Well, Day's barely had a shot. Selby nicely used to conditions already. Best of nine now. So uh, this tournament no longer best of seven. A little uh, more wriggle room. There'll be an interval. But even so, Myron Day looking at this and thinking, OK, I'm going to have to play well today. Mark Selby's made 40 centuries this season. It's surely about to be 41. said that he's missed the black that was a surprise and a disappointment for Selby as I say that could have been the highest break of the tournament it ends at 91 all the same he's looking good already this uh, Tuesday afternoon Mark Selby the world champion leads Ryan Day 1-0 here in Clandid now remember it's first to five to reach the quarterfinals of the Labrooks players championship century even just put the black to the jaw when he's going so well, as I say, he's a £5,000 highest break prize this week. So a little annoying, but anyway, he's won the frame. That's the main thing. Just a reminder, the winner will play Marco Fu or Anthony McGill. They're still in their first frame on Table 2. That's live today on the Eurosport Player. Table 2 live all week on the Eurosport Player. It's going to be a Selby to break in frame 2. Good crowd in this tournament. Well supported. Last year it was the World Grand Prix here. But uh, the change in tournament hasn't made any difference to the turnout. They were queuing to see Ronnie O'Sullivan last night and they've been rewarded this afternoon with a great start from Mark Selby as he breaks off in frame two.
Well, it was an error from Selby, but Ryan Day unable to pop that red, although it was an acute angle to the middle. Now, can Selby get through? He can certainly get through to the ones on the left-hand side. Not sure about the ones on the right-hand side, but either way, we're taking something on. Well, he's not, actually. I think he felt that uh, with the black not potting to the right corner, maybe not worth taking on the ones to the left corner. Couldn't get through to the ones down the right-hand side. McGill's going to win the first against Fu. On table two. It's on a big break there. You expect the standard of snooker to be high, of course, in this tournament. It's the 16 best players of the season. And we saw that last night with Ronnie O'Sullivan and Anthony Hamilton, of course. Anthony, I suppose, at the start of the year would have been a surprise entrant for this tournament, but he won the German Masters, had a very consistent time of it in the other tournaments. We've been watching the Home Nations events. Semi-final, quarter-final there, and built up the points to get himself in the tournament. And it's now in the quarter-finals. Well, just a little bit thick on the safety. Cubal not quite reaching the bolt line. Ryan Day eyeing something down this right-hand side. Maybe that they're all covering each other. The look on his face suggests they could be. Anthony McGill there has won the first frame against Marco Fu. McGill won the Indian Open and the shootout. It's got to be said that the shootout did not get him in the tournament. He was already in. Meanwhile, what a pot from Day. Not only the pot, but to hold for the black like that. Terrific shot. Brilliant. Whether he can just stay on the black here, this could go wrong. Yeah, he, counting the other red, wasn't entirely sure how it would all finish. It's not finished great. Pink to the middle is. Uh, is missable and pressure on it because he's leaving reds on for sure if he does miss the pink. Well, he's not missed it, but the cue ball has not finished kindly for him. So that good initial red, but it's already gone wrong and looks like end of break. Desislava Boshilova, the referee, just uh, getting the pink as close to its spot as it will go, all the other spots occupied.
Well, I guess Day didn't want to play down to Bolt because he's conscious of leaving long reds on. Mark Selby needs some cover here. Well, Ryan Day acutely aware that these could, should have been his. He was a little unlucky earlier when he was getting in and not really landing on anything, but that was a definite chance. The ready missed to this left corner. He's let Mark Selby in. And Selby, if he goes 2 0 up, can forget about the errors that he made because he wasn't punished for them. Mark Selby's won two world championships. Two UK Championships, three Masters. Looking to add to his title haul here this week. Something came fluttering down there from the ceiling. Something, it looked like sort of tick, ticker tape or something, which tr traditionally comes down at the end of the tournament, not on day two. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen again. Well, it's looking for all the world like 2 0. And Ryan Day must feel that it should be 1 all. There's Marco Fu. He's just levelled up with Anthony McGill, 1 each on table 2.
42 in front, 59 on. So two more reds required for Mark Selby. But the frustration for days, unlike the first frame, he's had chances in the second one. Missed that red to the left corner. That was the, the key mistake after Selby completely missed it a safety. So Selby needs this red and it should be 2-0. Slightly ominous signs. Although we've only had two frames, Selby in the balls looking really good. Safety not as hot as normal, but scoring-wise, he made 91 first frame, could have been a century. He's up to 74 with a chance to make a century in the second. Didn't quite get the intended angle on this black. Yeah, and uh, that's why he's missed it. He's trying to get on the red for the century. But anyway, 75 will do. All from a Ryan Day mistake. A miss from the Welshman. Let the Englishman in. And it's Mark Selby with breaks at 91 and 75 who leads Ryan Day 2-0. Between Mark Selby and Ryan Day. And Day just ruining that miss. And at this level, the standard of the tournament, top 16 in the world this year, one that mistake like that can be... Fatal, it was in that frame. There's uh, Fu McGill, just to remind you, one all. It's live on the Eurosport player. We'll have table two coverage on the Eurosport player. We go down to one table, actually, uh, later in the week on Thursday. But uh, until then, table two on the Eurosport player. Good match there tonight, actually. Barry Hawkins, Neil Robertson. On table one, it's Judd Trump against Mark King. We'll have coverage from 8 o'clock CET here on Eurosport tonight. So, Ryan Day finds himself 2-0 down. Mark Selby's up breaks at 91 and 75. Selby knows he's on top. He's uh, aware that the Welshman will be annoyed at what happened in frame two. Selby, a great uh, one for the psychology of the game. Well, the black uh, may go to the middle. Oh. Got close to it. Big shot that really because he's played for the red to right corner. So the black had to go in really and it wasn't easy at that angle. One. Oh dear. Well, things just not going for Ryan Day right now. Just needed to finish on something, but that's where he has finished. Well, 
he's potted the brown. He could have rolled it behind it. Sure, Day wants an open game today because Selby, despite the mistakes he made earlier, is a great safety player. Can boss that style of match. An open game would be preferable to Day's style of play. Well, that's such a great pop. It really is. Cue ball very close to the back cushion. So, made queuing even more difficult. Look where the white is. And he's powered it in. And uh, looks like he's finished on the black as well. Although, hasn't got the angle he desires on the black. So, taking the yellow. Chance to clear some reds from around the black spot. Again, he didn't quite have the desired angle on that black, and that has not, has not finished well. Can still cut this red into the left corner, but it's uh, a thin cut. And leave the rest for it. It's not on the one far left. So just a safety. Let's end a break after a very good initial red from distance. Relief for Day, because when he saw that red fly in, he must have thought, here we go again, another big break. But Selby, as I say, didn't quite get right on the black. And it affected the next shot, didn't get on the red. And because he's on top early on, Selby doesn't want to start taking undue risks and leave easy chances for Day to get settled in the match.
No, that Selby safety today has not been as strong as it usually is. And he's offered up another chance here. But Ryan Day's got to start taking these chances. He's got himself in. Not sure. He's having a look at the black spot here. Whether the black would respot on it. Just nudge that red. I don't think it would. I think it would go on the green spot. We'll find out soon enough. Deshislava Boshalova is going to get the ball marker out to see. Oh, in fact, the pink spot <laughs> is free. This doesn't necessarily help Ryan Day. Well, it's imperative that he puts something together here. Just gets settled into the match, gets involved in it. And punishes the Selby error this time. Mark Selby's safety so far today not as good as we're used to seeing, because we're used to seeing great tactical play from him. Once again, he left a long red on and Ryan Day this time trying to make a frame winning contribution. Well, that black uh, had a think about going in, didn't it, before dropping. Leads by 33. So, three reds required to win this frame. Moko Fu has gone 2 1 up Archie. against Anthony McGill on table two. Watch 
Meanwhile, on table one, Ryan Day so far doing what he had to do here. 49 the lead with this black. So another red in the colour. It should be 2 1. Just mindful of that pink. Don't want to foul at this stage. The referee will uh, just keep an eye. He's okay. He's, no, he's nowhere near it, actually. So that should be Ryan Day's first frame. Mark Selby did have a, an early chance, but ran out of position. After potting that black to the left middle. And then he played a poor safety, another one in this match, and this time Day has taken advantage of it. The red stays out, but a good 72 from Ryan Day, and he wins his first frame of what is already a real high-quality match here in Clendidno this afternoon. So one more frame before the interval. Mark Selby leads Ryan Day 2-1. With one more frame to come before the interval. Remember, it's best of nine in the first round, the last 16 of the Players' Championship here in Clendidno. On the other table, Marco Fu leads Anthony McGill 2-1. The respective winners play each other in the quarterfinals. Already through, we've got Ronnie O'Sullivan. He beat Liang Wenbo 5-1 last night. And Anthony Hamilton, great win for him. Also 5-1 against Stuart Bingham. Tonight, we've got Judd Trump against Mark King. That's the main match. And also Neil Robertson against Barry Hawkins. Well, Mark Selby, the only thing I think a concern for him so far is I know I keep saying it but it's, it's unusual that's why his safety play just isn't quite up to scratch and that's that is unusual for him just the old mistake and of course in that last frame he let Day in to take on the long red and ultimately win the frame with the break of 72 so this is frame four Selby looking to take a two frame lead into their mid-session cup of tea and Ryan Day looking to level up Interestingly, because Day was right behind that in his seat, and he could see he wasn't going in. He was out of his seat before the Reds got to the to the uh, pocket. Knew it wasn't in. One of these frames where red go, reds go down the bulk end and therefore the cue ball stays down the black spot end. 
or at least that's the plan. Players trying to get the cue ball on the top cushion. Well, there is a red to the left middle, but it's a fraught with danger. There's not really any safety aspect to it. So if Selby goes for it, he's got to go for it full-blooded. Looks like he's taking it on. And he's got it. Well, that little kiss was not kind. <laughs> it landed him in trouble, actually. just get through to the yellow it would seem wasn't sure there so he's okay I thought for a moment he'd been snookered still not quite out of the woods and so needs uh, to recover ideal position but at least he wasn't stymied on the pot If the cue ball stops, well, I was going to say for the black. If he's on the pink to the middle, he's OK. Look on his face suggests he isn't. So just uh, the black, little safety, cue ball back on. Top cushion. You seem to, to work hard for those four points.
Well, back to more of this uh, safety down the black spot end, as I say, trying to force an opening by getting that cue ball back to the top cushion, which is what Ryan Day's done here. Selby in a spot of bother with that cue ball welded to the top cushion. Looking to pot his way out of it. What a shot. He gave that a lot of thought. He's going to get nothing for it other than the point, but at least he gets to take control of the table. Great pot, that. Quite a cagey frame, then all told this so far. It's one of those frames, it's a long frame, but there'll probably be a big break in it. It's just someone needs to, to get in. Selby was in, but couldn't keep going. But where the reds are, chance for a really big break. But it's just at the moment, as I say, pretty cagey stuff. Both players trying to keep the other out. Day going for that one, and uh, it was a big shot because where the Reds were, he had to pot it, and he has. So the Welshman in. He's had a really good spell from the turn of the year. January second was the start of the Championship League. Not necessarily a day players would want to be back playing snooker but he was there in group one
was runner-up in Group 1, was runner-up in Group 2, got to the semi-finals of Groups 3, 4 and 5, won Group 6 and lost in the final of the winners' group. And he earned 32,600, more than Anthony McGill got for winning the shootout from that spell in the Championship League. But it wasn't just the money, it was all the match play against top players. It really toughened him up. And we saw the results of that quarter-finals of the German Masters. Final, of course, of the World Grand Prix. He lost out 10-7 to Barry Hawkins. And then semi-finals of the Gibraltar Open just recently. So great form he's been in. And it all comes from that match play and the confidence that he gained from it. And hence he finds himself in this tournament. Rubber stamped his qualification just at the weekend in Gibraltar. He had to get to the last 16 to be sure. He got to the semi-finals. Had a good chance to beat Judd Trump as well, but the wheels just came off a bit. Trump won 4-2. But straight back into another tournament. 13. Second tournament in Wales in the last month. We were in Cardiff, of course, for the Welsh Open. February. This is North Wales, Glenn did know. Well, it's terrific ready going with, because as I say, where the balls were, he had to pot it. He was leaving the lot on for Selby. That could have been 3-1. So I think that illustrates the confident mood days in. It comes off all the results I've just mentioned. Still only 29 in front here, so he's got to close this one out, but every chance to do that. Just missed a little cannon. Four. Needed a little cannon to the pink. And he's not won this frame yet. Still 59 on the difference, only 35. Five, 
So a hard-earned 40, but Ryan Day disappointed not to have killed the frame off. Well, slightly hamper queuing with this green. Didn't make a difference, though. He's knocked it in. Just come wrong side of the blue. But a great pot in a frame he could easily have lost. Yeah, he's just slightly hampered with the green there. But as I say, didn't stop him knocking the red in. I think he felt it was a slight kick. He's had the white cleaned. Conditions have looked really good. First day in a bit of this player's championship. So he's uh, taking the black. It was that cannon to the pink where it went wrong for day. Why oh, he didn't get it. <coughs> and that red below the pink now looking a key ball in this frame. Well, Selby's got the cannon, but uh, I'm not sure if this red will wriggle in the middle. It's a very tight angle. So although he's freed the red that was uh, safe, it's just a question of whether he can continue the break here. And these middles are, are tight. There's not much uh, given them at all. Just caught the jaw, that's why it stayed out. It's not left it on, but it's not won the frame from it either. 19 in it. Big frame this, of course, they're going to the interval after it. 3 1 or 2 2. Just caught that jaw, it didn't really get close to the pot there.
this looks a good shot. Looks to have snookered Selby on both reds. Yeah, you see it. Monk Selby then up against it here. He's got a firstly hit one. That shouldn't be necessarily a problem, but getting it safe, that's the, the issue. Day 19 in front, just needing realistically one more chance to make it 2-2. Remember, Selby led 2-0. Pretty good from where he was. You saw the side on the cue ball. But uh, he has left a chance at the red to the left corner. Just a, an edge of pressure on this, though. Good pop. Now it's all about getting on this last red. Well, I could push this brown safe for a bit of security. Didn't uh, see that he had a, a way to get on the red. So he's just trying to close the frame out in the way Selby would do. Put a colour safe, lay a snooker. Wait for a better chance. As it stands at the moment, Day needs red and a black to lead by 28 with 27 on. So he's not far away from clinching this fourth frame. Well, the double is a possibility. All sorts could have happened there. Came very close to double kiss at one stage. I thought he might kiss it in the middle, but does Ryan Day take on the double? He does, and he pops it. If he takes the yellow, he needs yellow again and green. Uh, left with a pretty acute angle on this yellow. Still needs the green as well. Three. So not quite there yet. May have to go all around the table with the cue ball. And as he's looking here, the route he wants to take, there's dangers of colliding with other balls. Needs to pot the yellow and get on the green. If he does, it should be 2-2. Two, two. But he's collided into the black. Well, as it, as it stands, yeah. at least he avoided the off there. As it stands, Selby can only tie this 25 in at 25 on. So the best he can do as it stands is force a respot. Nevertheless, he can still win the frame. Not yet at snook is required. It's a free shot of the green in a way, though, because the brown safe... So, just mindful of in-offs, he can take the pot on. Yeah, and he's knocked it in. That's a good shot. And now he's in a very strong position because Mark Selby needs two snookers. So Ryan Day has done well. Mark Selby started with breaks in 91 and 75. 
They made a 72 in the third frame. This one's been a lot cagier. As I say, Selby needs two snookers, otherwise it's two all. And he'd feel pretty good at the interval, I think, if uh, that was the score, because, as I say, the way Selby started, the danger was he would start to run away with the match. goes the brown so 2-2 two, two. nailed on now for the interval score line as I say done well but it's indicative really of the general form the general confidence Ryan Day has been showing lately he's played well since the turn of the year in 2017 and Mark Selby walks off to the interval knowing he's got a match on his hands here he started well the world number one the world champion 2-0 up Mark uh, Selby but Ryan Day's pegged him back they're all square 2-2 two, two at the interval Well, Selby breaks a 91-75 to lead 2-0. They could have been two centuries, but uh, he uh, lost the third frame to Ryan Day, 72. Fourth frame could have gone either way. It went to Day, so that's why they're level. An immediate chance here, though, for the Leicester man. One. Yes, good pop. Not the best break-off shot from Ryan Day. Selby's got a great temperament, and uh, I'm sure in that interval he may have gone to the practice table, but it's just about keeping himself relaxed, really, and preparing for the rest of the match. He's played well overall. I think the only concern for him is we've seen some of his safety maybe not as strong as we're used to seeing from him. But overall, he's played pretty solidly. Nine. Fifteen. Point one. Point two. Point nine. Third. Yeah. 
37. Thirty-eight. Well, I think he's got a thin cut to the middle, but uh, didn't quite come off as intended. That last shot. He's already up to 45, so this is a big shot in the frame, if he takes it on. He's thin. Not looking at that one, looking at this one instead. This is tough. Look at the acute angle he's got to that middle pocket. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but afforded, in theory, more safety than the, the other shot. I'd be disappointed, though, because, of course, got in from the Ryan Day break-off shot. Ready missed was on, but Day has not knocked it in. And the cannon to the pink is a bit of a killer for the Welshman because it's left a much easier pot than had the cue ball come past the pink. It would have been a much thinner red, the one to the middle. Now it's very much on for Selby. See the middle or the one to the yellow pocket, either way. Mark Selby with a chance to get going again. One. That's the thing with what's just happened. You know, Selby was disappointed to have broken down, but he's straight back in again next visit, so he can just forget that he ever broke down. Just carrying on really from where he left off. Thirteen. Well, this is the, the key shot now, the cannon to the reds. Blue to put him 63 in front. Just needs to get on a red. It should be 3-2 to Selby. Played it so well, didn't whack into them, did he? Controlled it, nice pace, and surely Thank it's you. his frame now. Played that so well.
going to six. Point seven. So Ryan Day's only had two shots in this frame. One was the break off shot, one was a missed pot. Not easy, but it was catching the pink with the cue ball that left Selby an easier red than he could have had that let him back in. Next frame's a big one, 4 2 or 3 3. Big difference. Mark Selby has looked back, uh, has looked uh, really good coming back from the interval. Sometimes that 15 minutes can just affect concentration, but. Didn't seem to be an issue for him. Point nine. Fifteen. Well, he I misses the black, but the matter he's made a 50 break. As I say, Dave didn't really get much of a look in there. And Mark Selby edges in front again. High quality match here this afternoon in Clan Didno. Mark Selby leads Ryan Day by three frames to two. Brooks Players Championship in Clan Didno, North Wales. As I say, this frame a big one. Ryan Day has not been in front yet, but 4 2 to Selby. And that makes. Uh, the world number one, a big favourite. Day is playing well in general. He's played well at times in this match, but needs to stay in touch, try and level up at 3-3. They are back on table two, by the way. Marco Fu leading Anton McGill 3-1. Just waiting for play to restart. Desha Slava Boshalova will be uh, given the nod as to when Five, she six. can start the frame. Here we go. Break. So Selby... Helped by breaks of 45 and 50. He's leading 3-2. the scene here, the two tables, it's open plan, no barrier between them, which is good for the audience as Day takes the long red on. Again, not su such a great shot from Selby. Ryan Day could get through to the red, and he's knocked it in. One. Cue ball just kept running, though, <laughs> and uh, has not finished well for him. And he lays the snooker.
again just a bit thick on the safety and he's offered up another chance it's been a concern for him today safety play selby Well, the crowd weren't sure whether that was going to drop or not, but it did. But that didn't. Where is this red going to stop? It's a thin cut to the corner, but Day had a definite chance there and uh, made a mistake from it. Uh, looks good if he's on the red just left of the black which I think he is got them nicely Six. open Well, Selby, acutely aware yeah. that this is a big visit in a big frame. If you can get to 4-2, he's going to be hard to beat from there. So the missed red to this left corner pocket from Day could be a significant shot in the match. Selby just working out a plan here. Got the plant. 12. Black on its spot, pink and blue also available. Reds spread quite nicely, so a definite chance to win the frame at this visit. Seven. 
36 Watch one. Marco Fu just keeping watch. He's a three one up on the other table against McGill. Well, Selby thinks he can pop that straight red. Bit of side required though, because you can see the pink is slightly in the way. A bit of side on the cue ball. No problem. Watch two. So this is looking very promising for the world champion. Fifty. Another half century, that's his uh, fourth this afternoon. Checking the scores, he's 47 in front. Fifty-seven. Fifty-three with this pink. Fifty-four with this pink, so either way, another red required. Should be four two. It was a red to this corner pocket, this left corner that Ryan Day missed. Sixty-three. When he was first in. With a good chance. Now we need snookers. Well, in each of the first two frames, he came close to making centuries, didn't quite manage it. Can he do so here? Oh, well, no. <laughs> it's the answer, because he's missed that one. But nevertheless, fine contribution of 87 from Mark Selby and Ryan Day, with it all to do now, because Selby has got himself within one of victory. He's played uh, some strong snooker since the interval. Mark Selby, 
leads Ryan Day 4-2. One more frame, and he is through to the quarterfinals. Terrific crowd in here in Glandidno this evening. And uh, they're watching two matches, of course. The other one, Marco Fu against Antti McGill. 3-1 to Fu. We'll just uh, show you that on the screen. It's live on the Eurosport player, of course. Four points in it in frame five with one red on. Big frame for McGill, that needing to win it to, to stay in touch. Well, Brian Day doesn't think the Brown's on its spot correctly. She's asking Desha Slava Bushel over to look at that. 4 2, Thanks Selby so in front. Brian Day needing to get in and make the most of his chances now. Turn off your phone, please. Text message coming in doesn't exactly help him. Maybe it's some advice. Well, he's had a, a go at that one, and he needs some luck in terms of where they all finish. And I tell you what, that little nudge there might have just certainly covered the red to the right middle. Ooh, that was dangerous. Well, he's not left the easy red, or the easier red, to the right middle. I just took a little nudge at the last minute, that cue ball. And this is much tougher to the left middle, and he has missed it. So Ryan Day got a little fortunate there, I think. And now he's got a chance himself. But he's running out of time in this match, so he needs to try and put something together here. Selby's had four half centuries, Ryan Day just one in the third frame of 72. This would be, I guess, a good time to remedy that. That's the attempt from Selby. 
but it was the fact that Day had managed to cover the other red, the easier one to the opposite middle that was key there. And Selby just got to wait and see if he does get another chance in this frame. Six. Eleven. Well, this was uh, the pocket he missed to in the last frame. Similar sort of red, actually. If he's thinking of the straight one, he's looking at a different one now. Marco Fu again, looking over his 4-1 up now, Fu. And again, Day's missed to the same pocket. He didn't look too comfortable on it. Whether it was he was thinking about oh, what happened in the last round, I don't know. But it took a while before playing it, which is not necessarily a good sign. And he has missed it. Question is, how damaging now is that going to be for Ryan Day? And there was the reaction from him. Yeah, Marco Fu 4-1 up against Anthony McGill. So already a 4-0 head-to-head over McGill could be five very shortly. One. This is a good chance for Selby where the reds are, pink and black, blue all available. Eight. Mark Selby looking to go deep in a tournament in 2017. Not done that since the turn of the year, of course. Won three ranking titles earlier in the season. Having won the World Championship for a second time at the end of last season. He's won the Paul Under Classic, the International Championship and the UK Championship. Runner-up in the Shanghai Masters. 15. Just not quite as deadly, though, since uh, the new year. But this could be the week, China to come. Ooh. Meanwhile, Five, 15. that was a really surprising miss. OK, it was slightly awkward queuing, but it was a straight red. Didn't expect him to miss it, and that is a massive reprieve. Massive for Ryan Day, and Selby knows it. This still needs uh, good queuing to the far corner, but match could have been over there. This is a lifeline that Day's been thrown. One. Nine. This was the miss. 
OK, he had to jack up his bridge end, but that was a surprise because he was right behind the red. 16. Point four. Yes, I'll be watching on there, knowing these should have been his really. Forage. Just uh, that one misses. Potentially turn the whole match. We'll see if they can close out this frame. Third one. Point four. It's all about poise under pressure at this stage where the balls are lying nicely, so it's just about keeping cool and potting enough of them to win the frame. Third seven. Leads by 33. Fifty one. An uncomfortable watch for Mark Selby. Visions there of getting himself into the quarterfinals. This is the ball. Ryan Day just checking the score. This is the ball that's going to leave Selby needing snookers. Sixty seven. Sixty seven, all from the Mark Selby okay. miss. Seven. He stays in his seat. You can see he's not impressed. He knows what a great chance it was to close out victory. As it is, the match has got a lot closer. Ryan Day pulls one back. Mark Selby leads, but only 4 3. 5 1 win over the shootout champion, Anthony McGill. Well in front in frame 6, leading 4 1. So Fu looking good. But. Uh, Ryan Day made a very timely 67 there from a Mark Selby miss to cut the deficit. This large crowd wondering who's going to come through. Yeah, Selby just had to sit and watch, didn't he? And uh, didn't look too happy. Let's see if he can make amends here in frame eight. He leads 4-3, so he's still one frame away from the quarterfinals.
<laughs> yes. Well, it was a full-blooded attempt, but balls n running into one another. This is what Selby was looking for. Oh, hang on, that wasn't. I was going to say a chance at the start of the frame, but he's managed to find the middle pocket. Screwed the cue ball straight into the middle. Yeah, I was going to say looking for a chance to immediately put right what went wrong in the last frame, but something else has gone wrong there. One. Well, does he take the blue on? Big shot if he plays it. One of those shots you might go for at 4 0, 4 3. More questionable, maybe. Looks like he's playing it though. Great shot. Needs the cue ball just to hold on though. It's just it's just over screwed that a little. Just uh, got into the white a bit too well Six. actually. Good sign I think that he's taken the blue on. Still feeling confident, positive with his game, but just overdid position, so it's gonna be safety. Cue ball back down to Bulk end. Wait for a better chance. Mark Silver six. Caught it too thin. 
Hence the cue ball coming back up the table. I mean, he's level with the blue there. He needed that white in bulk. And uh, grimace from Ryan Day as he sits back down in his chair because he has left the pot to the right corner. Marco Fu, meanwhile, just wrapping up victory over Anthony McGill. So Fu, the third player into the quarterfinals after Ronnie O'Sullivan and Anthony Hamilton. And of course, he plays the winner of the match we're watching here between Selby and Day. Yeah, you can see that's uh, the last ball going in. Marco Fu beats Anthony McGill 5 1 this afternoon's first winner. Fu, of course, having a great season. He won the Scottish Open in December, played fantastically in McGill's home city of Glasgow. Semi finalist as well in the UK Championship and the Masters. One. Well, that's not finished at all well for Selby. There's nowhere here. He won't take the blue on this time because it's hamper queuing over the red. Didn't get across for the black either. So back to safety again. Try and force another opening. No more distractions, of course. Now the other match is finished, which is a good thing for these two because we're getting to a crucial stage of this match. Well, he took his time over that, didn't he? And uh, it's finished uh, well for Ryan Day. Not only has Selby missed, but he's pushed red over the left middle. Selby just can't quite kill this off, and there's no guarantee he will. Remember, it was 6-2 to Selby on the overall head-to-head -head coming in. First four of those six victories, all thumping One. wins. Two four ones, a six nil, a four nil. But if he wins this one, it's going to be tight. And he hasn't won yet. Now that red has gone six. and blocked the pocket for the red he played on. So that has not worked out. Just watch this. This red just is in the way now. This is uh, quite risky, actually, this plan. If it goes wrong, he's leaving them on. But it's not gone wrong. The red, in fairness, was quite close to the corner pocket, but he was digging down on the initial shot. And uh, it could have gone wrong, but anyway, played it well.
So Diane in the frame, he needs to level the match. Selby's had chances. He had a chance in the last frame. He's had chances in this frame, but not over the line yet. Fifteen. Twenty three. Thirty one. Well, this is shaping up to be a really good chance to force the decider. Ryan Day, in such a good form of late, just uh, Sunday he was in the semi-finals in Gibraltar. A few days before that, he was runner-up in the Championship League. 36. A couple of weeks before that, runner-up in the World Grand Prix. 37. So he's got the belief back that had gone missing for a while. Ryan Day went to size six in the world. Slip right down, but he's up to 18 with a good chance to be in the top 16 for the World Championship. Of course, that means he won't have to qualify. 44. And this tournament will have a bearing on that. Needs to go uh, as far as he can to shore up that position ahead of China. China opening in Beijing, that is, at the end of March. Because he hasn't qualified for that. That's the point. He lost to Fraser Patrick in preliminary so hasn't qualified for China therefore needs a really good run here to get ahead of the pack but right now he won't be thinking about that he's just thinking about this visit as he attempts to level up at 4-4 and force that deciding frame finish leads by 49 with 67 on 52. so there's only a couple of reds from doing that So this is the ball that's going to consign Selby to snookers required. Looks like we're going all the way. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. 
eight. Well, this is Ryan Day's one. highest break of the match. What a time to make it. Mark Selby, remember, was banging in the last frame with a chance for 4-2. He had chances early in this frame with a chance for 4-3, but 88. we're going all the way to settle this. Ryan Day with a break of 88 has levelled the match and forced a decider. Mark Selby has not been able to put him away. And concern for the world number one. He knows this could have been over by now. But we're all square at four frames all. And we'll be back after the break live with the decider. Frames breaks of 67 and 88. We're just waiting for Ryan Day to return. It's all on the next frame. No one going anywhere here. This packed crowd. Looking forward to seeing how this one. He's going to be resolved. I think if Selby loses now, he'll be very disappointed because he has had chances to win. But it's all down to one more frame to decide who plays Marco Fu in the quarterfinals of the Players' Championship. And particularly big for Day. I mentioned his world ranking position. The extra 5,000 for winning is going to help that. He's going to break in the last frame. Oh, what a pot. One of the best pots of the match. Gets Selby in first in the decider. This tells you a lot about Mark Selby. He's not screwed the cue ball all the way back to bulk. He's played for bulk colours. He expected to pot that. So first in. Eleven. Twelve. Nineteen. Twenty. Well, running, running out of uh, loose reds.
So the key to Mark Selby winning frame of match at this visit is going to be in a couple of shots time disturbing the cluster. Selby now just looking at 35. that pack where he can get a good split. Yeah. Got to leave an angle here to get into the following shot. He has an angle. Two things here. First is don't miss the black. That's the obvious one. Second is got to trust a little bit of luck in terms of how they split. But realistically, just needs to get on one red, and at least then he can keep the break going. Well, it's a good split, this, but uh, is he on the one red? They've split nicely. Can he cut this one in the left middle? That's the one he's going for. Great chance now then for Mark Selby to wrap up victory. What a great red he potted to get in. Bearing in mind he'd lost the last two frames after having chances early on in both of them. Real gutsy pot it was. From a real gutsy player, let's be honest. Ooh, that's what's happened here though. It's completely lost the run of the cue ball there. And that uh, if that was a big bounce then that's come at a terrible time. Because the cue ball, let's watch this again. Ooh, it seemed to speed up that cue ball. Well, he's the jester sort of has a half smile, half grimace on his face. That has uh, derailed this break. And he's got to recover from that. And Ryan Day sensing that he'll at least get back to the table. Selby just pushing this red save, cue ball down to bolt, but that's annoying for the world number one. Black Break seven, ends at 46, seven. match not over yet. Push the red save. He didn't get the cue ball to the bolt cushion, which does offer up a chance for Day, but oh, he's uh, a little bit wild with that one. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, didn't cue it too well. He's uh, He knows that. Yes, well, it could have finished worse, actually. I mean, the, the red, nowhere near the pocket. Hasn't left anything straightforward, though. But this red does pot to the yellow pocket. Not there, though. He was on the black, had it gone in.
as he left this to the middle. Can Day see enough of the red to pot it? He's right behind it. He thinks he can. Or can he? Oh, it's one of those. It's a big shot at this stage. 46 points down in the decider. Going for it, though. Nope. It's always heading to that knuckle. Now the question is, can Selby pot the opposite, uh, the red to the opposite middle? If not, then he can take the one on to the yellow pocket. Just feels Selby's one pot away, really, from winning the match. Gordy in front, Day grimacing after this one, always heading to that jaw, which meant it was always staying out. Selby is taking the one on to the left middle. And that one is in, and he's on the blue. Another chance then for Mark Selby to secure a quarter-final spot. It's been high-stakes stuff today. It's been high quality as well. Been a good match, this. We've had seven half-century breaks altogether. Four from Selby, three from Day. But it's all come down to this visit. Mark Selby with a good lead, a couple of safe reds as well. He'd be disappointed okay. now, I think, if he couldn't close this out. Ten. Sixty-two, the lead, sixty-seven on. So this red 16. is effectively match ball. He's played a good decider here, Mark Selby. As he often does, master of brinkmanship and all that. And uh, once again, when the questions were asked, the answers were supplied by our world champion, Mark Selby. Played that one nicely, but the match well and truly over. Well, a, a good match, as I say, a tough battle. Ryan Day's been playing well of late. He showed that again today. The good form is in, but it's going to be Mark Five. Selby against Marco Fu in the quarterfinals. Certainly put through his paces. But... Uh, Although he feels pressure, obviously everyone does. He responds so well in these deciders. He's got such a great record in them. It's not on that red, but the damage has been done. 37. And Mark Selby books his place in the quarterfinals of the Players' Championship. A high-quality match against Ryan Day here. This afternoon, 4-2, had chances in both of the next two frames to close it out. Ryan Day responded well, but Mark Selby has played a great decider, and he wins by five frames to four.